Good afternoon and greetings from Planet Waves. This is the September 19th, 2024 edition of StarCast that goes with today's horoscope and very short article on the Libra equinox and the nature of early Libra, where there is this massive concentration of galaxies, which somewhat helps explain why the sign Libra is what it is. Uh, I may get into that a bit today. Uh, I just want to mainly check in with the current moment and take a look at the Libra equinox chart. Uh, The sun enters the sign Libra September 22nd. That is Sunday at 8.43.28 a.m. So that's 8.43 in the morning, Eastern Daylight Time on Sunday. Uh, It has been an especially wild week. Um, This this is uh, reflected in the news. I don't know if it is reflected in your direct personal experience, but there have certainly been some very unusual events developing in the world, even by the standards of 2024 uh, and here in the uh, wave front of the digital age. Uh, it is um, crazy that there we, we are being told there was a second attempt on Donald Trump's life in only a few months. Uh, that that was on Sunday, and uh, and then through the week there has been the news of uh, these uh, exploding sabotage Trojan horse devices, I mean laptops, uh, cell phones, pagers, walkie talkies that were somehow outfitted with explosives and blew up across Lebanon uh, in in the pockets of various Hezbollah operatives. This is some kind of Iranian, we're told, some kind of Iranian terrorist network. Um, What we had astrologically this week, and I'm, I'm sure that everyone felt this in some particular way, though, given the fact that it did involve Neptune and that it did involve Pisces, the effects could be slow in their onset. But uh, not only was there a lunar eclipse in Pisces, a partial lunar eclipse, but still a lunar eclipse, there were occultations by the moon of both Saturn and Neptune in Pisces. So this means that Neptune and Saturn are lined up by declination. That's a form of a conjunction, even though they're they're a bit far apart in longitude. Uh, when when you can have occultations on consecutive days, that that means there's another kind of alignment. It's called declination, uh, and so that adds to the kind of intricacy and power <clears throat> of the events of the week. And then while this is going on. Uh, I'm, as I mentioned last week and for many weeks prior, there is this concentration of minor planets in Capricorn. And Mars is now opposite all of those planets. So that includes Mars opposite the centaur Pholus. And Venus is opposite the centaur Chiron and minor planet Eris. Minor, but not so minor. Chiron, minor but not so minor. And today, the moon sweeps through late Aries, and uh, by the time you're hearing this, or, or shortly after, will have made conjunctions to Chiron and Eris in opposition to Venus. So all this is, uh, I don't mean to get too jargony on you here, things that you may not be able to follow or visualize. But as an astrologer, I do need to say some of this and and say uh, what it is. Otherwise, I could be a tea leaf reader. The upshot here is that we are living on the brink of something that we don't really understand. We're living in a place, in a space, in a zone where we have never been before. You may know that one of my hobbies is studying the history of of media and its transformational effect on human consciousness, self-awareness, and self-concept. And humans are always following along as the products of the tools that they create. 
and up until the 1920s, depending on when you measure, with the telegraph in the mid-19th century or the advent of radio in the early 20th century, there, there were basically 2,000 years of the gradual onset of literacy as a way of defining what a person is. And by the middle of the second millennium AD, the printing press was coming in, and we were defining ourselves by the effects of the printed word, which pushed the concept and the experience of individuation, of people being distinct individuals. And in two main waves, mid-19th century with telegraph, and then early 20th century with the rapid onset of electric light, of rapid integration of telegraph and radio, and what's the other one? Telephone. Humans became electrified, tribalized, de-individuated. And so what we have been fighting with all of our lives is the tension between being an individual and being part of a faux electric tribe. We, we are not really tribal. Tribal is like hunter-gatherers ro roaming around the planet in bands of 25 people. That's tribal. Uh, tribal is the Yanomamo Indians in South America. These electric tribes that are created are not actual tribes. They are a kind of forced illusion of a tribe or rather of de-individuated people. We are living in enormously stressful times right now. And it is true that the stress is economic and that the stress is social and that there is uh, all kinds of pain in the world and that even if you're doing pretty good, it is likely that you have friends and family who are really, really struggling. And we all seem to be living on the brink of something that we are uh, uncertain of and wondering like when something huge is going to happen. When And, and, so, and we live basically if plugged into this uh, extended central communal central nervous system of the media now now sent into this hyperspace mode by digital technology that has increased the speed of everything now that everything's me measured in nanoseconds and communicated instantaneously. Uh, th this is adding enormously not just to the stress but to the cause of the distress. And it may be little comfort to understand the source of this but I think that for those who are, who aspire to being spiritually aware, it is vital to understand what this new God of the ego level of consciousness is. This is not actual God in any shape or form, prime source, creator, the intelligence holding the universe together that so, you know, organizes the galaxies and the atoms and all this wonderful stuff. This is something else. This is something that is affecting our relationship to our bodies that is being taken as a experienced as lived as a kind of a new god but it is very cold and cruel and it is not given to any of the empathy kindness healing or forgiveness that we think about that we that many of us spent years of our lives studying and training and taking workshops and reading books and going to seminars and events and practicing and meditating and meeting with people and doing our best to be kinder people, suddenly this is getting unraveled very, very quickly as a whole new concept of omniscient, omnipotent, all-powerful, all-seeing, all-knowing deity is being <clears throat> rapidly imposed on us, and that is the digital environment. Make no mistake, this is being taken as and experienced as God. It is not God, but that is the, uh, the 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 closest possible description of this absolutely overwhelming state of affairs that we are in. 
And I'm sometimes reminded of the idea from deep in the heart of Tibetan Buddhism that the Dharma remains unchanged, no matter how twisted, weird, uh, absurd, obscene, convoluted, inside out, the world gets, the Dharma remains unchanged. And I, I'm aware that it's difficult to have faith in that in the midst of so much, uh, not only way too rapid change, but it is difficult to maintain any sense of inner focus or uh, calm stability or sense of meaning and purpose to one's life. It has to be one's primary calling. Do you have to devote everything to focusing uh, a sense of your own meaning and purpose of your existence and, and essentially bring everyone and everything into this? And most people just are too busy struggling to even pause long enough to consider uh, the possibility that there is some peace of mind possible in the midst of all of this, but the Dharma remains unchanged. Your inner teacher remains available all the time. And as the Course in Miracles says, the Holy Spirit's voice is as loud as your willingness to listen. Yes. All right. So, uh, we we are still in read now reading the planets we're look, uh, looking for the signs of his return to the sun the moon and the stars as is said in Revelation like the friendliest thing in the entire book of Revelation uh, the the well the news of this week has been this eclipse which is still reverberating um, met by the meeting of personal planet Venus opposite Chiron and Eris. There's a lot of catastrophobia in that. And the personal planet Mars opposite Pholus, the sense of things running out of control. Pholus, the small cause with the big effect, the release from containment of anything. The concept is just the release from containment. Mars is still aligned in this uh, uh, aspect right now, as I record on Thursday morning, Venus is exactly opposite Eris, and Mars is exactly opposite the midpoint of Pholus and Ceres, the grape and the grain, um, from Cancer to Capricorn. So we're still in this big stretch, and adding to the big stretch, the stretch across the dial, these oppositions are always a big stretch. The sun is clearing late Virgo. It arrives in Libra, and a whole new adventure begins on Sunday, but for the moment, the sun is opposite Neptune. So here, again, is another big stretch, almost like the, the big stretch across the water, because it is, is Neptune that is involved, and this makes it difficult to have any perspective on what is real and what is not. And the, the only thing you can really do is just proceed from moment to moment and try to keep your perspective, to be looking ahead of you and then also think of those around you. Turn your head from left to right. Think about yesterday. Think about what you might want tomorrow. Think about the wider perspective uh, as, as much as you can. I mean, that Gestalt therapy perspective of turn your head from side to side, right? These are basic Gestalt exercises. Drive home a different way than you went someplace, just to mix it up a little bit. And with Neptune in the picture, being aware of and conscious of your boundaries, of boundaries literally meaning locks on the door, literally meaning where you leave your purse or your wallet, Boundaries meaning the commitments that you make, uh, the, the, the nature of people's commitments to you, to pay attention to those things that can get very slippery under the influence of something like we're experiencing now, which is a big Sun-Neptune aspect. And these big Sun-Neptune aspects, particularly the opposition, can have the feeling of a sustained full moon with this kind of woo-woo, uh, spooky energy and things infiltrating into your dream space. So take note of those and particularly how you feel when you awaken from, when you return to slowly normal awakening consciousness from your dream space. 
uh, the sun is making a lot of contacts with planets right now. For example, as I speak, at the moment, it is exactly 90, 120 degrees. That's a trine from Uranus. It is very close to 120 degrees from Pluto. This means that Uranus and Pluto are in a trine. The square was back in 2011. That was the upheaval. So now, they're, right now, as we speak... There is a crazy, I hadn't really thought of it this way, and I spent a lot of time reading these charts. There is a grand trine aspect, Sun, Pluto, Uranus, with Neptune right there. That's a kite pattern. And the, the beauty of the kite pattern is it gets you out of the whirlpool of the grand trine. Grand trines, that is to say, planets very closely placed in the same element, in this case, Sun, Virgo, Pluto, Capricorn, Uranus, and Taurus can act like a vortex or a whirlpool that draws you in. And when there's a planet at one of the midpoints to that, that is your way out of the, the vortex. But in this case, the planet at the midpoint is Neptune, and that's not very good at getting out of vortexes. Neptune is the the biggest vortex of them all. So uh, a lot of planets aligned very late in the signs right now, and certainly an interesting situation. And I know so many of you are just fully invested in the routines of your life and getting children from place to place and getting to work every day and coming home and just kind of uh, a lot of one day being like the next. I would encourage you under this astrology to pause long enough to get perspective and see, feel, observe, notice the conditions of of your life at this time, of existence at this time, and recognize that we come very briefly to this place. And where we are passing through now, we will never pass through again. So please do what you can to participate in sincerely feeling where you are. This is a challenge to the dominant environmental energy of just go, 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 which is very electric and then radically amplified by digital. I mean, I often think, when, with digital consciousness where, I mean, and I, I, my, my primary device is a, is a computer. I, I, I don't, I'm not really a phone guy, but it's kind of inevitable. But there's six different apps on the phone delivering messages all the time. And that's not very many, I've got relatively few. And, and think about, you know, 30 years ago, there was some email 30 years ago. Most people did not have email. A couple of like geeks had email 30 years ago. So let's go back 30 years. Even email moved slowly. But usually you'd have to check your answering machine. The mailman would come once a day and not on Sunday. Uh, there, there weren't Amazon packages and FedEx is flying, crisscrossing through the skies. Uh, being deposited on doorsteps and Grubhub and Uber running around. And basically, I I don't know if anyone's done the math on the number of interruptions per hour, but I bet that we are at at least at somewhere between one and 300 interruptions per hour. Contrast that with 30 years ago when the mailman came once a day and maybe there was something for you. And maybe it was just some junk mail and a politician trying to get your vote, and that was it. You got a couple of phone messages, very nice. You were not stalked all the time. This makes it very difficult to feel who you are and notice where you are. But again, referencing Gestalt approach, and by this I mean Gestalt therapy of Fritz Perls and Laura Perls. There's often a reason for the avoidance of feeling. So it's not merely that we're overwhelmed by all the devices and the constant interruptions and the bells and whistles and vibrations and things going off. There is often an underlying motive of a need to avoid 
something. And if you can tune into that thing that might you might be avoiding, ah, all right, that's, that is making some progress. Um, one wonderful thing about astrology is that uh, it, it provides me with this kind of bird's eye view of existence that I then do my best to provide back to you since most people can't read astrology, though it is a wonderful form of literacy um, to, to gain a shift in perspective, to look at the game from, the, from, from hovering directly above it rather than constantly being involved on the level of the action. It's a very big shift in perspective. And since astrology mostly concerns itself with the passage of time, uh, we get a new perspective on time. All right, let's take a look at the having been, having lived through and continuing to live through all of this. And remember to keep reality checking. The sun is fucking opposite Neptune. And it is trying. All of the outer planets are now in aspect. I want to just, sorry, I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to emphasize this point. We're in a very strange situation right now where, where Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, Chiron, and Eris, what I consider to be the five modern planets, are all in aspect right now. And the sun is passing through this over the next few days. Has been and is and will be. That is the intensity. Use this special once-in-a-lifetime moment. This pattern is about to dissolve. It will move on to other things. It will take other forms. What we have now is something we will never have again. All right, now, as for that uh, equinox chart, as promised. So the sun enters Libra, September 22nd, 8.43, 28 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And uh, begins. Uh, we begin a whole new adventure. We get a whole new quadrant of the year. And also... Uh, well, the, the equinoxes and solstices always bring a sense of a natural turning point. I think many people find the autumn to be one of the northern hemisphere autumn. I know I've got some friends down in the southern hemisphere. Northern hemisphere autumn, one of the more pleasant experiences of time, uh, end of the seasons uh, turning and changing that, that many people experience, uh, a rebalancing Point. And what's so interesting about the rebalancing point, as I mentioned in the short article on top of the horoscope, is that early in the second degree of Libra, like about 16 minutes or something into Libra, there is this massive galaxy called M87, Messier 87. It's a galaxy, I think we have like uh, 300 billion stars in our galaxy, and, and, and M87 is in the trillions of stars. It is a, a huge universe of its own. It is right there in early Libra, and it is also the concentration point of 1,300 galaxies. Can't even think about what this means. The concentrate in early Libra, and the sun is passing through the gravity anomaly that all of these contain. And so this is a, there's a lot of juice coming through right now. And there's a sense of the fog clearing, the Neptune fog starts going to start to slowly clear, especially with the sun in Libra. Uh, so that is the equinox point, and we're heading for a partial eclipse of the sun. Uh, that takes place, where have I got that? Oh, no, that, that chart is just, just a little bit out of my reach. I'm not going to get up and get that, but I'm going to try to calculate it very quickly in Sprite. Events, that would be moon conjunct sun. Uh, so the eclipse is October 2nd uh, at 2.49 p.m. daylight time. Uh, that, that is about 10 days away from the sun entering Libra. The, the eclipse takes place at 10.04, so that's about 10 days. We're not there yet. I'm going to talk about that one more next week. But just know that we are in the inter-eclipse zone. We are in the space between eclipses this is a very important time to establish the patterns that you want and to shift the continuity of what you want to move beyond. 
So this is the power and the beauty of eclipse phases is that they are they they are um, pattern setting pattern shifting phases of time and we are now right in the interzone between these two unusual eclipses okay so um what have we got going on here in this equinox chart all right so one thing going on is uh there's more venus and mars activity and the 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 venus and mars activity uh, let's start with Venus. We've got Venus exactly square Pluto in the equinox chart. So this is a quest for power. Whenever you've got something square Pluto, it is likely to manifest as a square, as a as a as an urge to power, or as Bailey might say, will to power, rather than will to love or something else that is a cover-up for something much sweeter, something more passionate, something more erotic. Venus plus Pluto is a deep erotic sense, but in the square, it might manifest as power. Most of what you see as gender rage is convoluted erotic energy, convoluted desire, feeling, which which is a very pleasant in, in some circumstances and not very pleasant when it is converted to power. So beware of this. Uh, this is this is conjunct Siva, S-I-V-A. This is about listening. Uh, I've got that marked here. It's only four arc minutes apart from, from Venus. Um, and uh, uh, is this, is it Terpsichore? Hold on, let me let me verify this. This matters. Serenu, I currently get get all of my minor planet information from a website called Serenu. S E R E N N U. Terpsichore. Nope, it is Siva. So uh, this is about sound and listening. And so uh, if someone is on a power trip of some kind. By which I mean someone that you love and care about. Listen for a while. See if you can get at uh, what is going on. This is conjunct Toro. This may be a real pushy kind of a come on, right? Where you like the you know the you have the execution before the trial. This is typical. One thing to tune into. Is that the that that a asteroid called Hecate Hecate is on? It's it's in the first degree of Libra, and the Sun and Hecate will meet in the first degree of Libra at the equinox. Hecate is about tuning in to deep intuition. It is difficult to tune in to deep intuition in a world where everything, where all consciousness, where all notion of anything spiritual, where all notion of all psychology, all spirituality, all of this has been replaced by fucking digital. I got an email the other day from someone who said that uh, they wrote to me and said, they, they just got off the phone with a friend who who would be totally suicidal and might take her own life if she didn't have the contacts with people that she had in digital. Therefore, how can you say this is all bad? An interesting email, right? Good question. I am not saying digital is all bad. What I, what I am saying is that it has supplanted something else else that it is the total all-consuming environment that we are in and that it is having effects that we need to understand and what i said is well your friend might not probably would not be feeling the way they were feeling at all if they were not already thrust into the digital environment is it the solution or is it the problem and look we all do fun things on digital. I am coming to you through digital contact. There is no way I would have the kind of broadcasting power that I have today 
if, if we're not for the digital environment. So I'm not saying the digital environment is quote unquote all bad. I'm saying it is the digital environment and we need to understand it and become aware of it and, and work with it very consciously in very tangible ways. Um, what, I'm, I'm reading a copy of, it's a little difficult to read, it's, a, it's an old typescript of a Marshall McLuhan article called The Relation Between Environment and Anti-Environment. By anti-environment, I don't mean being mean to frogs and trees. I mean going against the prevailing trends of the utterly dominant environment. And he gives many examples of how, for example, art, is a, a way of going counter, true art goes counter to the dominant environment. That's why it has such a hard time being recognized at first. And in order to get out of the prevailing state of mind, which is generally completely unconscious, it is, uh, it, it is uh, n- numbs us out, you have to go against it in some way. And that involves asserting yourself into the environment, expressing your ideas in the environment, and remaining in the on position. This is why it is important, if you want to get the greatest benefits of my work, to propose your own ideas in the comment section. I, I know what I have to say is interesting, and I, I do my best to make it engaging and loving and friendly and all this, but you will make my work your own by adding your ideas, responses, and impressions. Ah, this is true of the entire digital environment. And to go a step further, give yourself permission to do something that you uh, want to do it with some spirit of, if, if, if not true originality, something different for you uh, to, to uh, for example, uh, not be obsessively, compulsively taking picture, share to Instagram, take picture, share to Instagram. Rather, work on one photo and, and make that something interesting, beautiful, and special, and post one thing and maybe some thoughts about it to slow down the process, to increase your own personal investment in the digital environment. What what is happening is that we are being so overwhelmed by the digital environment. It is so shocking because it's an extended shared nervous system blanketing the entire planet that the instinct is to cut off like dropping a hot pot. And the artists, in, in, in the sense of being anti-environment, of going into the headwind in some way, are the ones who are willing to stay connected to your feelings, your ideas, and your tools all at once. This has, uh, among many choices that will not help you very much, give you something that helps Focus your sense of place, your sense of time, your sense of who you are, and to leave you connected rather than feeling cut off, dangling from a wire, or disconnected. In in a strange way, and really it's not that strange, the solution to this whole mess is to bring your creativity into the environment rather than cutting off, chopping off, and resisting. Now, at the same time, we need to do the same thing in physical space and to hold the same standard, the same standard of politeness and of sincerity and of honesty and of creativity in digital space as in physical space. This, too, will help. All right, I think that is about it. Um, I've had a uh, prolific week here at Planet Wave. So yesterday I did a a uh, podcast of some length, I think I try to keep it half an hour, talking about uh, Israel sabotaging thousands and thousands of devices uh, in, in the pockets and on the desks of and, and uh, various uh, other places of Hezbollah militants, we're told, or Hezbollah militants, and they detonated thousands of devices, got dozens of kills. This 
is a major turning point in the digital history. It is it is not merely the the concept of these devices as weapons. It is their actual manifestation as bombs. There is something in here, and it ain't so cryptic. And we need to be paying attention uh, to what this is. I have not, obviously, it's only been a couple of days, fully sorted this out and, and um, made really heads or tails out of the chart. I welcome your input in this discussion. Many of you have been listening to my analysis of digital conditions, which goes back to 2016. I wrote my first major article on, on digital conditions. That's not that's nine years ago, eight eight years ago. That is a long time. Many of you have been listening with with sincere interest and in bringing your intelligence to this. You are ready to add your thoughts to this discussion, and I will tell you that lest you think I might not think that your thoughts are up to par or something like that, I get many of the best ideas and the best observations from people making their first observation or very early in their experience of saying, hey, what about this? It This seems to me like this, based on what you've been saying, that we're living in this environment, and there's been now this, you're saying, you're pointing out that there's been this irrevocable shift in the environment of the actual weaponization of these tools, making them into bombs. Huh. What is this? This to me seems like as big of a change in the digital condition as like the launch of the iPhone itself or the launch of Sputnik itself or the introduction of the first licensed radio station. This has been a very big week. Keep your lights on. Pay attention. Please add your comments to the comment section. As important it is to, for me to have the ability to fund the projects I do, the ability to have a dialogue with you is absolutely crucial. It, and it, it feeds my soul and I will feed yours. So thank you in advance for that. Signing off from New York at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning on the 19th of September, 2024. Thank you for listening. Please stay in touch.